Good morning, everybody. Orin J here with another War of the Visions video, and today's video is a special one. It is going to be my ultimate new player guide. I think there's going to be a lot of new players coming into the game about right now. We have the one year anniversary coming up. We have the Final Fantasy X collaboration coming up. And this game is going to start getting a um, nice wave of fresh players. So if you're one of those players, this video is all the tips I would give myself if I was one of you. And in less than 20 minutes, I'm going to tell you all the things you should do to get your account going in the right direction. So you can start clearing that in-game content. So you can start competing in high-level PvP. So you can just feel like, hey, I have a pretty strong account that can do most everything in the game. And I'm at the point where I can start focusing on getting stronger. All right, number one, should you re-roll? No, I don't think you should re-roll in this game. Now, if you're coming in because there's one unit that you like saw in a commercial and you're like, I really want that unit, I still don't think you should re-roll because I think we're probably going to get some like unit selection tickets from the anniversary. But if you really want to do that, hey, play how you want. However, in the past, I would have told people to re-roll because there's one unit in particular you really need to get and you really need to max out to power up your account. That's Jiza. Not because she's a great unit, but because her Trustmaster reward, which is something you get when you take her all the way to max level, is the best item in the game. The only way to get it is to fully limit break this unit, and if you don't have it, your account's going to feel crippled. The nice thing that Gumi has done is they've put her in the guild metal shop. You will quickly learn what the guild metal shop is as you're playing. It's just where you can exchange your guild coins for items, for units, stuff like that. Jesus in there. You can get her for 2,000 guild coins and you can get 10 of her shards a day. This is what you want to do. This is the first thing you can spend your guild coins on. She's one of the first units you should focus on leveling up. Get her maxed out as fast as you can. She saves you from having to re-roll for her. Um... This is a massive power up to new players, and it's the first thing I wanted to talk about. You don't need to re-roll unless you just really want to, then you know, do whatever you want. Okay, let's move on to like the meat and potatoes of this video, which is your account, uh, which you're actually going to use to play, right? Units, vision cards, espers, gear, all that stuff. I want to start with units when I'm talking about things you actually want to go for and level up. Specifically, there are three types of units in this game. Tanks, supports, and damage dealers and of course they all kind of like cross over into each other some of your supports can deal damage etc so let's think about it like this though you have your tanks you have your supports and you have your dps units it's that like pyramid or triangle or whatever that's like basic in most games and this game fits that pretty well you do want to have a nice balance of all of these for your account to be um end game if you want to clear the new events if you want to clear stuff as it comes out you're going to need all these so i'll start with tanks mont you guys you get mont for free he's the main character in the story this dude's a good tank um I used him so much when I was new. He's about to get his EX jobs, which if you haven't heard those yet, it just means he can go all the way up to level 120. His shards are literally purchasable for Gil. He will save you Vizior, the in-game currency. He's your man. Looking on the screen right here, I have his Trustmaster reward. If you remember me talking about Jiza, I said her Trustmaster reward was really important. Well, Mont's is one of the first ones you're going to get. And by the way, in-game players today still use this. Level this guy. Like, it's the biggest mistake new players make is they don't level up Mont. Guys, Mont can be your tank, and now you're saving your in-game currency, your Vizior, to spend on other things. Mont is a great unit. One of the things that makes him a great unit is his paladin sub job he has access to the key um, tank things that you really want he has immortal spirit which will let him come back to life once he has taunting blade so he has a way of gaining aggro like being your tank and he has sentinel these are really important abilities that you will learn to love as you play but i don't think you should worry about making your first unit that you're going to invest your like precious vizior in a tank because the game hands you one if I was new, I would level Mont straight away, and he'd be my main tank until maybe a collaboration tank came out later, or you are Mont comes out in a few months. I might wait for that to be my first um, you are tank. Until then, Mont's a great MR unit. He even has a limit break. Uh, highly suggest investing in this unit for your tank. All right, let's move on to supports. Now, 
there's not a super free support like Mott was your super free tank. You're going to have to spend a little bit to get a support leveled up. However, you do have a lot of options with support, and I want to talk about a few of them specifically. Um, Ildira and Ayaka. Now, Ildira is going to be your most accessible support for a new player because you don't have to spend Vizior on her. Again, one of the focus of this video is save you as much Vizior as possible so you can spend it on things you want instead of things you just straight up need. Ildira is a Vizior saver. You can get her in a shop. I'll show that here in a second. Ayaka is like your prototypical best healer unit in the game. She has all the healing spells, she has a limit break that's a heal, she has access to full life, which if you've ever played a Final Fantasy Tactics game, brings a unit who's dead back to HP at full life. Great skill. If you happen to pull Ayaka, you know, in one of the pulls that you're getting as a new player, I would suggest investing into her and leveling her up. She won't let you down. However, my biggest suggestion is going to be Ildira because she's in those shops she's in the friend metal shop you guys as soon as you start playing get on a discord like maybe my discord over at salt squad link in the video or link in the description of the video and just say hey i have a bunch of friend slots open i'm looking for people to add as friends every day you can send your friends little coins friend gifts and they'll send some back to you and you will just start accumulating a lot of these things you see this is my picture i have 33,000 friend medals if I didn't already have Ildira and all of her shards, I could go buy her for 2,000 medals, get myself a brand new UR unit, and then get 10 of her shards every day and relatively quickly get her maxed out. She's a great healer. She's a calculator, which is a really cool job that has like instant cast abilities, and she can do pretty good damage. Highly, highly suggest making your first friend medal purchases, Ildira and Ildira shards, and maxing her out as quickly as possible. Um, that's my, that's what I would do if I was a new player looking for a support unit. Okay, next step. Let's talk about your DPS characters, the damage dealers. There's two types in this game, magical and physical. Uh, you're going to get access to one of both for free, like real free through the bingo boards. So what are the bingo boards? They're these challenge missions. I'll throw a picture on the screen here. Um, kind of to the right on your browser or whatever you're playing on, there's this thing called challenges. Inside of there are challenges called UR Unit Challenge. You're going to get two units by doing this, Shadow Links and Medina. Just do what it says on those squares that pop up. You can see it says got it on all of mine because I've already you know, gotten Medina and maxed her out. Shadow Links, who you will get before you get Medina, is an MR unit. She's an evasion physical DPS unit. She's like a prototypical ninja. She's worth leveling for an MR unit, especially if you want to play some evasion. She can. She has multi-hit attacks, which is really useful for chaining, something you'll learn about as you get farther into the game. You should level her as you, as you can. But Medina is a pretty dang good mage who does a lot of damage and is very good at farming. In fact, if you get Medina and you max her out, and you get Ildira and you max her out, you have pretty good farming teams starting to form, which will really help you as you're trying to like farm those materials from the story and farm those missions that get released every once in a while. Magic damage dealers are the best farming units in this game, and Medina was the original one that most of us re-rolled for just for that reason. You can get her for free now by doing these bingo board missions, um, really great value, everyone should do it. Now, what about the rest of damage dealers? Because there are so many out there. Okay, this is where the game starts getting cool, in my opinion. Pick one that you really like, get that unit, maybe with a UR select ticket from the uh, collaboration event, maybe you've pulled a unit randomly and you're like, ooh, I really want to work on this unit. Just do it. All of the UR units in this game except for like Moshery right now. Sorry, Moshery, I gotta do dirty like that. Or at least usable in some way. There's plenty of tier lists out there. There's plenty of unit reviews out there. You can do some research, but essentially you can play almost any of them. And that's where the cool variety in this game comes in. If you followed all my steps to this point, you'll have a tank, you'll have some healers, you have some mages, you're ready to pick a physical DPS unit or another mage and just go. Maybe you've pulled another mage like Skull or something, and you're like, I'm just going to be a mage player. Do it. You can absolutely win this game 
like that. Now, some things later down the road like raids, you're going to have to have maybe a more specific unit. But for right now, pick your favorite damage dealer and just go crazy. Like level that unit up, have fun. Um, you know, maybe you search on YouTube for some guides or something like that. But you can that it's the coolest thing about this game in my opinion is the variety in which you can play. And so all of those tips that I've given you so far to so far to save your Vizior use it here in leveling a specific unit you want and i think that'll make the game more enjoyable for you okay we're ready to move off of units and on to vision cards now vision cards are something that i had never experienced before until i played this game it's essentially a card your unit can bring into battle that will give them a buff and buff the rest of their group these are going to be useful in PvE, they're going to be useful in PvP, they are how you tune your group to specific fights, they're how you buff your magic or your physical attack, or you generate some hate before the fight starts so your tank can take aggro, all of those things. Um, here's the deal with vision cards. There's a point in this game where you feel like, hey, I've got a nice variety of UR units leveled up. At that point, start focusing on UR vision cards. Until that point, leave UR vision cards mostly alone and focus on your MR vision cards, your um, lower rarity vision cards. Use those early. When you first start this game, I really think you want to spend most of your Vizior on units and not working on your UR vision cards. They're really hard to level. They take a lot of resources. It's, it's a big resource drain. However, the MR vision cards in this game are very, very good and a lot of in-game players still use MR vision cards regularly. So investing into those early in your account is a smart idea. One in particular that I want to talk about is one of the most important vision cards in this game, and that's Vow of Love. It is an MR ranked vision card that you can get in one of those shops for, you know, free. Just your medals, right? So here it is on the screen. You see the stats on the top, that's what it gives your unit. Um, it gives HP, attack, and magic. It gives a lot of HP and a little bit of attack and magic. Okay, the important thing about this card is it is a tank card. If you look at the unit effect where that arrow is pointing, it increases the chance of your unit being targeted by 5. Now, what that 5 means is it's in a formula. Essentially, it guarantees the first two attacks from the enemy team will go towards your unit, which buys them time to use one of their other um, hate generating abilities. It lets your team set up. It's one of the most important cards in the game and sees a ton of play in the end game still for players who've played this game for over or for approaching a year. Get this card and level it up. How do you get this card and level it up? Great question. Well, the arena metal shop. One thing you can do every day, and you should do five times a day, is just go participate in the arena. When you're a new player, you're going to get smashed, probably. Doesn't matter. You get medals for getting smashed in the arena. Start saving up these medals, and make sure you get Vow of Love, um, and start working on it. Get Vow of Love maxed. It's really cool that you have access to it in the arena metal shop, because back in the day we did not, and we just had to randomly pull this thing once. And people who couldn't pull this thing had a rough time progressing through like pvp climbing any sort of ladder because they're like i just can't generate hate with my units this is a clutch card it's super important like go get this thing and i wanted to show you that you can get it from the arena metal shop we're going to get a lot of free pulls in the anniversary by the way so you'll probably pull this or maybe it and some duplicates of it so you could start gathering those shards and leveling it up but the arena shop if you don't randomly pull it go get it from there okay um i think that's about all i want to say about vision cards if you just really feel like you need a ur vision card and you want to sink some vizior into it you can um the game is going to give us a lot of like guaranteed step up banners where if you do like five poles you're guaranteed to get a vision card and then there's ways during that like bingo boards and things to get the shards for those vision cards but you guys the crux of this game the most fun part of this game is the units so i highly suggest focusing on your units first but if you just really really want one vision card because you have a favorite unit and they have a perfect vision card because you watched a guide and it said that go for it you know what i mean play the game however you want those are just my these are just my tips okay next Let's talk about espers, kind of that other piece to the unit puzzle. 
Espers are summons from other games. Your units can equip them and they buff your unit's stats and give you like specific um, slashing attack up or magic resist or something like that. Here's the thing with espers. There's just not really a super fast way to level these. You're going to collect them by pulling the vision card they are attached to. For example, if you pull the Fenrir vision card, you also get the Fenrir Esper. You don't ever need to pull another dupe for that Fenrir Esper. You just need these crystals to level them up. You will get the crystals over time by running the Chocobo missions. So run the Chocobo missions and collect those all the time. Um, that's how you level espers. We'll probably get a bunch of like free leveling stuff from the anniversary that's coming up or from an event. Hiroki likes, Hiroki the global producer likes to give us gifts whenever he does a video and he always hooks up the um, esper leveling materials because it's just going to take a little bit of time to level these. Now, because of that, I want to tell you a couple espers that if you do happen to pull their vision card and get the esper that you should work on. Um, Odin, in my opinion, is just the best generic physical DPS Esper. If you pull Odin, level him. He's fantastic. Golem is the best generic, like, physical defense tanking Esper. If you pull the Golem Vision card, you get the Golem Esper. If you level him, you're not wasting any of your resources. Shiva is my favorite mage slash support Esper. Um, if you level her, you didn't waste any of your resources. So, if you have other questions beyond that, again, like, feel free to come to my stream sometime. I stream on Monday, Tuesday, Friday, Saturday, and I just, we just do PvP and things, but that's the best time to contact me live and ask questions. If you're worried about wasting resources on that, I'll put, like, a link to my stream um, in the description. So, let's start wrapping this up, because we're at 16 and a half minutes, and I'm going to keep this under 20. So, in closing... How should you play the game early if you want to get off to a good start? Well, the first thing I'm going to suggest is uh, pay attention to the events, pay attention to the shops that are coming out. Gear is going to be one of the things that you're going to struggle to grind out at first. However, look in the shops. Like, for example, right now we have the first anniversary countdown shop part two that is giving out plus five gear for only 2,000 Vizior. Now, you might think, hold on. That's my precious Vizior that I need to be pulling and getting new units. If you're new, these are an insanely good value. Getting a piece of plus five gear, especially a weapon or armor, will dramatically increase the power of your unit. And you might look at these and think about getting them. There's going to be videos that content creators like myself, Dr. Diggs, um, the other content creators will be putting out talking about if these are good or bad. Just check out our videos and see if this is like a trap or not. Um, but I highly recommend watching those shops. What else should you do? Play the story. Use your use the story to gauge how far your um, group is, or how fast your group is progressing. I know that seems probably like really basic, but the story does get more and more difficult. And if you're getting to the point where you can't clear it, well, maybe you need to go find some high level friends because you can bring a high level friend into your party and it'll help you clear the story. You get a ton of Vizior from clearing the story. You get a ton of rewards for clearing the story. Play the story. It's actually a pretty decent story too. So it's not like terrible to do. Also, look for the current events. Right now we have this event called the Agitator, which gives us the opportunity to farm some gear. There's the crazy acquisition quest, which gives us an MR unit for free. Pay attention to these limited time quests and get your count to the point, get your account to the point where you can do the high difficulty EX quests. That will let you start farming some of your own plus five gear. And you're, you'll see over time if you do that, your account will start powering up. So those are my those are my big tips. That's what, how I would play the game right now if I was new. Um, make sure that you join a guild. Even if the guild sucks, join the guild, go attack in guild wars, kind of learn the ropes so you can start collecting those medals. Add every friend that you can. There's going to be people in the general chat saying, hey, I'm looking for a friend. Just add them. You can add real friends later and remove those. Do your daily missions every day. And you know what? Play the game how you want. That's the most important thing. Have fun with this game. It's really cool. I've really loved it. I've played it for almost a whole year now. And you know what? Um, if you have any questions or anything, stop by my stream sometime. 
and just ask them. We have a great community. That's one of the best things about this game is the community is really tight and they're all really friendly, right? Like we get along and it's awesome. If you do decide that you need to like spend some money in the game, um, I'll ask that you use my Amazon coin affiliate link. I'll put that in the description. That just, you, you can save money if you buy Amazon coins and you're just hooking me up with some of the money instead of Jeff Bezos. So I, I'd ask that you do that. And yeah, I hope y'all have a fantastic time with this game if you're new. Um, yeah, enjoy and I'll see y'all in the next video.